Well, folks, this is uh, part three of the Northern Snake Edge Truth series. And if you haven't seen parts one and two yet, stop what you're doing. <laughs> Go back and watch parts one and two, all right? Part one especially because it covers the definition of invasive and the fact that thus far, the evidence does not support labeling Northern Snakehead as invasive. That's crucial information. <laughs> now, today's episode. Today's episode is going to cover snakehead feeding habits, what they prefer to eat, and how they eat it, which I think you'll find surprising because I certainly did. Now, keep the intro nice and short. Let's get straight to the video. Something we touched on again here, uh, but especially looking at the snakehead life cycle. As they grow, how does their forage base change? Oh, like because I've heard that as they're small, they're very heavy, like insectivores. They they like eating various types of insects. As they grow, frogs and then larger fish. What have you seen in terms of stomach contents in your study with what the forage base is for snakehead? So I've ripped open hundreds, maybe thousands of stomachs, and so I've got a pretty good idea. Um, we've done several uh, publications on food habits because, of course, that's a, a primary concern. Is what are they eating? Yep. Um, for fishermen and for, I guess, people worried about the ecosystem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, documented is one of the earliest to switch to piscivory. Uh, it's okay. a piscivorous fish, meaning they eat other fish, and, and they, they switch so fast. They do eat, as you referenced, they do eat invertebrates early on, as almost all fish do, but they quickly switch uh, to, to larval juvenile uh, fish and become almost exclusively piscivorous. But again, the snakehead is a, a, the epitome of an opportunist. And so what we see is late summer when you get the hydrilla mats mm -hmm. and there's a lot of crayfish and those hydrilla mats, they'll switch to crayfish. Uh, if you're in a, a situation yeah. where there are a lot of amphibians, they will have more frogs in their diet if you're in a place where there's fewer frogs than, than not. So when I fish for them, I, I do like uh, floating frogs oh, just yeah. because they're weedless and yep. I, can, I can throw them up on, on basically no water and, and bring them back you know, into that two inches, three inches of water where a lot of times they'll be laying up. But I, I don't think they're choosing anything, whether it's banded killifish, um, we occasionally see blue, bluegill by weight is definitely the most abundant prey item in both lakes and rivers, which is a non-native fish here in this part of Virginia. Um, but I, I, I don't think they're choosing bluegill as I don't think they're choosing banded killifish. I think when you look at their habitats, heavily vegetated, you know, less than two feet of water, what are they going to find? And, and, if you, and so if you go out and did a survey for what prey are there, you're going to have a very high correlation with what's there as to what's in their diet. Okay. All right. So pretty much as, as they age, I mean, we'll see huge 10 pound snakeheads filled with, you know, one inch banded killifish, you know, just, you just keep, they just keep coming out, you know, and they're, and they're the other thing about when snakeheads eat, uh, it's very interesting because we've always had one in Fredericksburg in our office in an aquarium early for educational purposes because a lot of people have never seen one. And so, but now most people have seen one, but we, we still like to have one in the office as kind of you know, a little companion. I, I love them anyway. Right? Um, and we, we feed them <laughs> and I've never, we've never actually seen a snakehead bite uh, a, a prey item. They inhale. So I don't know why they have teeth. The teeth are wasted. I've never seen a perforated food item. And wow. I've taken so many food items out of their stomach. They're always completely intact. No, no teeth marks. Um, and, and they just, and, and we've watched them eat and they create with that swim bladder, they create a vortex and it's just like, just, whoop, and they just inhale. God, uh, I, I, lo I love that noise. Yeah. <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm fishing, I love hearing that pop. Oh yeah. man. man, no perforations on any of the food. Yeah, isn't that that's, amazing? That's, that's, that's wild. It's not like bluefish, you know, where they just bite their fucking oh, yeah. half or mackerel or something like that. They just like this dicing machine. Uh, snakeheads just, they just inhale them. So again, I, why the teeth? I, evolutionarily, I don't know why. At some point, maybe they needed them, but they sort of, they don't use them. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed episode three. I know it was a little bit short this time, but I just, I couldn't believe that there were no perforations on the food items that snakehead ingest. Because if you've been fishing for snakehead any amount of time, you've probably seen by now or experienced more than a few short strikes, especially for topwater fishing for them. So maybe there's just a different way they feed or those bites aren't true feeding behavior. Maybe there's a feeding behavior bite, a territorial bite. I don't know. And I think there's definitely a question there to be answered. So in the next episode, we're going to cover snakehead movement, reproduction and habitat. Some more crucial and very interesting information and findings in there from the most recent science on Northern snakehead. And uh, for today's outro, I'm going to try to still include one tidbit of snakehead video <laughs> just to get us through these winter months until we can go fishing for them again. But I'm also going to include a lot of photos and these photos came from two Facebook groups I want to give a shout out to specifically. One is frog eaters and the other is snakehead fishing throughout the world. 
And I really only asked for thumbnail photos for this video series because I didn't have any really good headshots for Snakehead. And the response I got was overwhelmingly positive. I have <laughs> so many Snakehead photos now, it's insane. So too many to show in one video. I'll show a bunch at the end of this, uh, give credit where it's due, and in, in the succeeding videos, try to use these photos again at the end of each video. So if you have some snakehead video, photos, anything you would like to see featured, I can't promise I'll fit everything in. I can't do that, but I'll try to. I'll, I'll try to see what we can work into these videos, all right? So I know the snakehead community is growing. We're passionate about these fish. So thanks so much for watching. Any questions or comments, let me know and have a going. Fish on, fish on. Yeah, in the middle. I kept seeing him out there. Yeah, buzz bait. Nice snake. <laughs> Thank God I closed my phone case back up, man. There she is. All right, girl. There she goes. <laughs> oh, man.